Have you ever faced a lot of trouble when you are solving competitive programming problems? Have you ever faced a problem where you go completely blank? Do you think that you lack that proper approach when you are solving competitive programming problems? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about three prerequisites or three steps that you should first undertake before getting on with competitive programming. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Tanmay Sakwal and welcome to my tech educational channel, Simple Snippets. And as the title of the video suggests, today I'm going to talk about three important steps which I feel that you as a beginner should undertake, should perform before starting off with competitive programming. So I'm guessing you're here as a beginner. So I'm assuming you guys already know what is competitive programming. And if not, we have talked about competitive programming in a separate video. You guys can check that out. But I get a lot of queries that even though people know what is competitive programming, even though people have learned a programming language, they still find it very difficult to start off with competitive programming. They still become blank or go completely blank when they face a particular problem and they don't even know where to start. And this is a very common trait, common issue that a lot of beginners have. And I thought that I should give some tips, some suggestions from my side, some of my opinions and from my experience. So I'm going to talk about three important steps that you guys should know before you directly jump into competitive programming. Okay. So let's start off with step number one. So step number one is to completely understand data structures and algorithms and all the fundamentals revolving around it. Now, this is something that you guys must have got an advice from seniors or someone who's a experienced competitive programmer, but this is something that is ignored a lot as a beginner. And I have myself done this mistake. That is because when you learn a particular programming language, you are completely enthusiastic, you're hyped up and you want to start competitive programming. You want to improve your coding skills. So you don't focus more or don't invest more time on data structures and algorithms. So you directly jump to competitive programming. You sign up on some competitive platform like code chef, hacker earth, hacker rank, whichever platform that you've signed up on and you directly start with competitive programming problems. And initially maybe at the very easy level, you might be able to solve a few problems, but as you progress, what happens is you start to realize that you're lacking that approach or you don't even know where to start or you don't realize which kind of algorithm or which kind of data structure is applicable in this scenario. Now, this is because your data structures and algorithms fundamentals are not very strong. And that is where all of your majority of the focus should be before you start off with competitive programming. Now, there is no such limit to giving time to data structures and algorithms. It's a very infinite subject. And you might have guessed it if you're an old subscriber on this channel, if you see the data structures and algorithms playlist, it's been going on since more than a year now, and we still have to cover many topics, right? So you guys can check out the DSA course on this channel. If you are new on this channel, and I would highly recommend that you be very thorough, you be very strong in all the data structures and algorithms concepts. What do I mean by this? So try to study and understand the working, the theory, the code of individual simple data structures like stack, queue, linked list, trees, graphs, all of them. Try to understand the different concepts that we have in data structures and algorithms. For example, recursion, what is divide and conquer, what is dynamic programming, etc, etc. Do the algorithms as well, the searching, the sorting, the different graph traversal, the tree traversal techniques. All these things should be very, very thorough. And when I say very, very thorough, it's not like you just know the theory or the working, you should be able to write code and implement these operations using any of your general purpose programming language choice, whichever you're comfortable with. Okay. So this is step number one before you get on with competitive programming and please emphasize on this step number one, because the next step is dependent on this. So dedicate maximum effort and time in understanding DSA concepts. Okay. All right. Now this takes me to step number two or the kind of like a prerequisite to before you get on with competitive programming. And that is applications of these DSA concepts. Another major phase, which is missed out as a beginner is to understand where individual data structures are used. Where are they applied? Why are they applied in such a way that one data structure is beneficial compared to other? Okay. So the application of individual data structures and individual concepts, individual algorithms is absolutely important for you guys to understand because when you will be solving competitive programming problem, that problem will be based upon some combinations of different algorithms, or there would be some data structure, which has to be used in that particular scenario. And to understand which data structure is used, 
you need to first understand individually where are the applications of these simple data structures okay so if you don't know the application of stack data structure you will not be able to solve the expression conversion kind of problem where you convert from in order to pre order because one of the application of stack data structure is to convert these expressions between the three different types that is in order pre order post order right this is something that we've covered in the dsc course as well so what i'm trying to say here is once you've understood individual data structures or individual concepts or individual algorithms try to understand where exactly are these concepts applied see the code see the technique see the theory see the working try run the entire code step by step to realize that okay this is how binary search works and this is how linear search works and understand where a linear search would be applicable and where a binary search would be applicable so to give you an example binary search is only applicable on a sorted list right you cannot apply binary search on a unordered list that is unordered set of data so this is something that you must know you should know where exactly is recursion used and where exactly you can use the basic iterative method right so all these things are very very important that is the application part this is something that is very underrated goes under the radar we don't really focus on this part we just do the data structures and algorithms which also is at times not really focused on very well but after studying data structures if you directly jump with solving competitive programming problems without focusing on individual applications then you will not be able to understand which particular algorithm or which particular data structure or which particular approach to take to solve a particular competitive programming problem okay so second part that is second step is to understand applications of all the individual data structures and algorithms thoroughly all right so the last step of this three step approach to getting started with competitive programming is well you guessed it practice yes there is no running away from practice and when i say practice it means you typing the code yourself with your own hands and this is actually just starting off with competitive programming the first two steps were about data structures and its applications where exactly they were used and building your logic and understanding different different concepts now the third step is where you apply all these two things and get started with competitive programming this is the step that you actually start off now talking about practice there are two very very important points that i want to tell you because everybody will tell you that you have to practice you have to keep on practicing you have to give loads and loads and hours and hours of work into the practice phase but that is not essentially true okay so the two things that i want to talk about when it comes to practice is number one consistency consistency is absolutely important because when you're starting off with competitive programming everybody is very hyped up everybody is enthusiastic everybody wants to be the top coder get placed into the best company but as time progresses as you start solving competitive programming problems or as you start facing a little difficult problems you get stuck at times and this is going to happen no matter how smart you are or how well you've applied all the different steps have applied all the different approaches etc etc you are going to definitely struggle at some point in time now when this happens you slowly start to lose motivation now this is where you have to keep in mind that consistency is very very important so what i would suggest is instead of you know just going 6 to 7 hours on one weekend try to split that time into 2 to 3 hours or 2 plus hours daily now my suggestion to beginners is at least 2 hours is needed when you're solving competitive programming problems and in this 2 hours please make sure you don't have any distractions keep your phones aside keep them on silent switch them off you know lock yourself in a room um try to stay away from noises and away from people and completely focus on that problem so that is the best way to make the most use of those 2 hours so in that 2 hours you'll be doing the work of 4 hours okay so if you're working very smartly and efficiently so a lot dedicated time daily to solve competitive programming problems or at least alternately because what happens is if you just work on weekends or if you just study on weekends for competitive programming problem the gap between the individual sessions is so large that the next week when you start off with competitive programming you will again have to revise what you've done in the last week this happens with pretty much everyone all the experts you talk to any expert programmer if you tell them to stop programming for one month or two months and come back and see their own code even they will need some time to you know revise that code what they've written themselves so make sure you have a consistency that is absolutely important the second thing that i want to talk about when it comes to practice is i have seen many times that when you are stuck at a problem when we get stuck in one particular problem we try to solve it ourselves we try to dedicate hours and hours to that one particular problem 
but we don't want to accept that we can't solve that problem this has happened to me at least many times where i'm stuck at a problem but i don't want to see the solution most of the competitive programming sites where the questions are there you also have the answers written by many other programmers so there are solved examples already there but what happens is our ego gets hurt you know why am i not able to solve this easy problem how do i solve it i'm going to solve it and i'm going to put hours and hours and work into this one particular problem now this is not really a very right approach or good approach because you need to understand that as a beginner it is very likely that you will be facing problems which you've never come across right competitive programming does not have a dedicated syllabus it is pretty much infinite so there are many number of questions which you will face for the first time and you have to be humble and uh, you know honest enough to understand that you're not able to solve that problem and in that case if you really feel that okay you're you're absolutely stuck in that scenario you have to tell yourself that okay i am not able to solve this problem let's see the solution so accepting that you're not able to solve a particular problem rather than wasting hours and hours of time on that one particular problem is the thing that you need to understand okay so as a beginner please make sure you do not fall into the trap of you know having that ego that you're not able to solve that problem then you'll invest many more hours onto it another issue that happens is when you're not able to solve a particular problem what happens is you dedicate hours and hours of work and ultimately when you're not able to solve it you get demotivated and you completely leave the work right you completely leave competitive programming this has also happened to me where there have been times where i'm not able to solve a problem and i get frustrated so much that i feel okay this is not for me competitive programming is not my cup of tea and i completely leave it instead of that if i would have just seen the solution what i would have learned is i would have learned the approach i would have learned someone else's code so when you study someone else's code you realize okay this is one approach maybe you see two solutions for that same problem and you realize okay these are two ways to solve the same problem and when you understand these two ways maybe you come up with a third one which is more efficient so when you study someone else's code also you realize the different approaches that they have applied so always try to expand your understanding expand your memory expand your you know expand your scope don't be stuck up with your own approach all the time because in competitive programming problems it is not always that the problem has only one single solution there are many solutions and it is your duty or you know your task to find the most efficient one all right so these are the two things that i want to talk about when it comes to practicing that is consistency and working smart and not hard all right and yeah these three steps if you've done in a proper way where you've dedicated enough time to data structures and algorithms then enough time to its applications and ultimately starting off with the practice with the right approach i am pretty sure that as a beginner you will face less hurdles of course you will face problems but at least the severity of these issues will not be that much in case if you start directly from competitive programming all right okay so these were my three step approach to getting started with competitive programming i hope this video was helpful to all of you guys if you found value in this video please give this video a thumbs up please hit the like button that would be very very helpful let me know in the comments if i have missed any tips if you have any tips if you are a expert programmer if you are a expert coder who's already into competitive programming add some tips in the comment section so that some beginner who reads those uh, comments will, will get a lot of help so that would be really helpful from you guys as well and if you are new on this channel definitely subscribe and turn on the notification so that you get tech educational videos like this one in future we have a lot of videos on this channel already go check them out and this is tanmay sakwal signing off thanks for watching see you in the next one peace